I'd like to introduce you to the world of cytology. I am a cytotechnologist and I have been for 15 years. It's a career that I thoroughly enjoy, but one that is not widely known about. Now, often when I tell people what my profession is, they'll say, oh, you're a psychologist? No, I'm a cytologist. And specifically, I am a cytotechnologist because we use technology to aid us in finding the um, actual diagnoses for patients. A trained eye, you can tell a lot about a person by carefully examining their cells. Might this patient have cancer, be showing signs of precancer, have a viral condition, or perhaps a fungal infection? Cytotechnologists are like detectives, trained to solve medical mysteries. By closely examining cells and marking areas of interest, cytotechnologists identify abnormalities and collect essential pre-diagnostic information for doctors. How do they do it? By combining an understanding of disease pathology with patient history, careful attention to detail, and visual precision. Each slide tells a story about a person and no two cases are exactly the same. Most cytotechnologists are employed in an office setting with a microscope and a computer by their side, and they often work predictable schedules with a strong work-life balance. So if you love science, you wanna enter a field with expanding opportunities, and you enjoy problem solving, a career in cytotechnology might be the right fit for you. Cytotechnology or being a cytologist is a STEM program. It's STEM because first and foremost, it is science because cyto, C-Y-T-O stands for cell. So it's the study of cells. And of course, there's technology because we're using microscopes and the latest technology to help us uh, quickly diagnose different conditions. Uh, it is biomedical, but not specifically engineering but there's also the math component there's um, a good bit of math being used also basic criteria for becoming a cytotechnologist is a bachelor's in science or four-year degree in life sciences and it also requires at least a one-year program in an accredited um, school to get certified as a cytotechnologist and after that you have to sit for your boards. Now digital cytology is something that's actually underway but I do not foresee it and it is not foreseen that technology or AI is going to take over this field anytime soon. Cytotechs are in very very high demand and they have been over the past few years so we have very good and great job security if you look at the positions available across the country there is a great deal of um you know fees and incentives being given to cytotechs to move and to come to these different jobs and positions because we are in such high demand the lab that i am employed at my day consists of coming in clocking in we have to clock in twice because there is a clock that actually just keeps track of our time in order for us to be compensated and then we have the clear clock now the clear clock is what regulates us and tells us exactly how many slides we are allowed and able to review on a daily basis within the time frame that we are there just so that we meet the guidelines and we don't get out of compliance. This um, also ensures quality assurance to make sure that the patient is getting uh, adequate, adequate care and time being spent on their particular specimen. There are different types of cells. Um, however, when it comes to like the skin or the cervix or vagina, there are different layers. You have your parabasal, intermediate, and superficial. It's superficial is the layer that is on the very, very outer surface. This is the cervix, and the cervix is something that we look at quite a bit because we screen um, mostly pap smears. So we're screening for cervical cancer or any other cancers or disorders um, 
or dysplasias or atypia that may be represented by the cells that come from the vagina. We are evaluating a slide or a specimen under the microscope. We often see different microorganisms. Now these can be bacteria, we can see viruses, we see parasites, um, and different things like that. One of them that we see a bit is called trick, and trick is a parasite. It's also an STD. Another one that we see quite often is candida, or um, which is a fungus, also known as yeast. So we see a lot of that on the pap smear samples. And another one that we see sometimes is the herpes virus. Yes, we can see herpes on the microscope um, in a sample, and this is what it looks like. It's like a very circle, circular representation that are very close together. Uh, so this is something that I really like. If you are considering a career in the science, sciences and you don't want to necessarily interact with the public, um, this is something that you might want to consider because it is in very high demand right now. The pay is very good. Uh, when I started 15 years ago, the starting pay was in the high, uh, high 20s. So it was probably around $28 or so. Right now, I'm not exactly sure what it is starting out because I've been here 15 years and um, the position that I have I haven't had, you know, any changes at all. I, I came here straight out of school and over the years, the pay has increased substantially because um, of the demand of our field and the shortage of Cytotex. So with that being said, uh, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, please ask and feel free to ask. Uh, this is my bread and butter. Although I have a lot of other things going on, I love this feel. I love what I do. Um, I know that it offers pretty good job security for the most part. And I love science. I love helping people and knowing that I'm helping people as well. Now, there's also um, some cytotechs that go to the hospital to take uh, samples from other body sites and they're called FNAs or the FNA team. And so they will go and take like, you know, breast samples or lung or liver or, you know, soft tissue samples and things of that nature from other body sites. But for the most part, most of the cytotechs that are there, they're screening pap smears uh, day in and day out. There are tons of them. They come from all across the country um, sometimes we even see some from different parts of the of the world and um, definitely from, you know, this whole coast that we live on. We we see um, pap smears from, you know, <laughs> pretty much everywhere. And it's very interesting to see. We we don't like seeing cancer because we know what that means for the patient. However, it is, you know, a little jolt in our day. Um, if we do see it because we actually caught it and we know we're helping someone and providing them with the best care that we possibly can. So this is something that I truly enjoy and I hope that this was beneficial to you and thank you for watching and listening.